Hey guys, welcome to Devtek Finance. In this video, we would be covering the topic business ethics. So let's start with the contents for this video. First, we would be talking about the introduction to business ethics, where we would explore why it has been important for all the companies to be ethically strong and to be socially responsible these days. Then we would be covering principles of business ethics. Moving on, we would have a look at branches of business ethics, which consist of meta, normative and applied ethics. Then we would be talking about some unethical issues in business scenario. And at last, we would see what are the importance of business ethics. So let's start with introduction. Before going on why it has been important that business ethics need to be maintained when you are running a company, it's important to understand some of the terms to get a clear idea about what does it mean. So moral standards. These are the standards that an individual has about what is right or what is wrong. So what you think about a particular situation, whether it is right, whether it is wrong, that is your moral standard. Values. So values are different from moral standard. These are the long lasting beliefs that guide society's decision and action towards variety of situ uh, situation. So the long lasting belief which so society thinks that it is good for society, it is, uh, uh, it is believed to be uh, good, ethically good and morally correct. So those are values which are inculcated in particular society. Then what is ethics and how it is different from moral standards or values? So ethics is a totally branch of knowledge which we study. It deals with moral principles, values and behavior. So all together moral standards, values, your behavior, all that is consisted in ethics which is a branch of knowledge which we go through. Then what exactly business ethics means? So when we are trying to apply these ethical principles, what we have learned in ethics, when we, are, when we try to apply these in day-to-day -day conduct of business, to examine and solve complex moral dilemmas, to see what rules and regulations need to be made, what actions need to be taken, what judgments need to be given, how one should behave towards the customers, the suppliers, the responsibility towards the society, that together is consisted in business ethics, how business need to be socially responsible, how business need to be ethically correct. The business does not only have to look for profitability, it has to look for longer sustainability of itself and of the environment and society in which it exists. Coming to principles of business ethics, so what guides, what are the principles that together combines what exactly business ethics is? So there are few principles which I have mentioned over here. First is impartiality. So whenever we are talking about an organization, a company, it is very important that your business, your organization should be impartial towards your employees. So you are providing them the equal rights. You are providing them what they deserve with a full uh, proper uh, procedure. Then that is impartiality. You are not being partial towards any particular individual. Then compliance with laws and regulations. So you are paying taxes. You are de you are giving full disclosure of your financial statement to all the shareholders and stakeholders. So you are complying with the laws and regulation. It becomes important when you are running a business so that you would be able to avoid any kind of legal consequences of it. Practice fair business. So business should not only concentrate on profitability. So uh, to earn more profitability, if you are doing adulteration, if you are doing malpractices, any fraud schemes you are presenting to the customers. So those all things should be avoided. You should practice fair business and thus with fair business, you should try to achieve the profitability and not through wrong means. Accountability, being responsible, being responsible towards your work, what your business is doing. You need to be obligatory, you need to be responsible for that. Trust and honesty should be built up among all the stakeholders of business. So stakeholders would consist of the government, the employees, the customers, suppliers, and all those people who are directly or indirectly involved with the organization. So it's very important that you build a kind of trust and honesty so that it would, uh, it would present a good reputation of business in the society. It would also help in earning customer loyalty and customer retention for a longer period of time. 
due diligence so complying with the laws and rules regulations complying with the norms uh, 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 perfectly so for example in banking scenario whenever you are giving loan it's uh, important that you need to do due diligence proper uh, properly you need to analyze about the customer his payment ability his re, his uh, uh, credit history and all so that is due diligence when you are trying to comply with the norms and regulations so that any miss happening does not exist social obligation so being a part of society business is responsible towards society as well so you are having some social obligation and you know for this reason csr activities have been mandated by the government and now all companies are involved in doing some kind of corporate social responsibility to so that they are giving uh, back to the society from which they have uh, utilized resources stakeholders interest i already mentioned and then justice and equality is what is believed to be the pillars of any organization when you are treating all your employees in an equitable manner coming to branches of ethics so bra- ethics has been divided into three major parts meta ethics normative ethics and applied ethics normative ethics is further divided as teleological ethics deontological ethics consequentialist and ethics by virtue so one by one we will see what all these means means so meta ethics meta ethics is purely descriptive branch of ethics now we would understand why is it descriptive it's descriptive because it uh, tells you it tries to analyze things it does not tells you what to do it does uh, it only try to figure out what is be what is happening so let's understand this it tends to study the meaning of moral judgments so what is the meaning behind moral judgments it is very foundational thing and meta ethics uh, tries to focus on foundation of your uh, moral judgments your behavior how it has been built up over a time it do not prescribe any particular action but tries to analyze the fact that made you act in certain way so meta ethics does not will say you that do not do this do not steal do not lie it is wrong uh, doing uh, charity is good meta ethics does not prescribe you any such thing but meta ethics will say that what makes you do what makes you think in particular manner so if you are thinking that charity is a good thing why you are thinking that what has built your mindset uh, uh, according in in that direction so it try to analyze the fact that made you act in certain way it deals with understanding the basis on which we distinguish right from wrong so if you are saying that a particular situation or a particular individual is right and another individual is wrong what makes you do that what makes you what is the basis on which you are categorizing right from wrong is that the uh, end purpose which is giving uh, which is in accordance with your conviction or is that something else so what makes you distinguish between two things it focuses on foundation of moral values attitudes and behavior so in simpler words as i said meta ethics is descriptive it tries to analyze that what made you uh, think in think in that situation what has built up your behavior what has built up your character what has built up your moral values and attitude so try to analyze that coming to normative ethics so as we saw in meta ethics it was descriptive but normative ethics it is prescriptive branch of ethics now it is prescriptive because it tries to prescribes you that how one need to act if you want to be right what is morally right what is morally correct and how one should act in particular situation so it tries to prescribe it presents you the difference between good from bad right from wrong So let's see it investigates the set of question that arise when considering how one ought to act in any particular situation so taking the previous example in normative ethics it would prescribe you that do not steal because it's not good do not lie because it's not good do not uh, break promises because it is unethical so normative ethics would give you judgments because it has been built up the judgment on the basis of prior experiences in the society so it would uh, it would uh, tell you what ought to be done it examines and suggests what actions are right or wrong morally tends to arrive at conclusion about acceptable behavior in society so as i already mentioned normative ethics you would tell you would uh, try to analyze the overall behavior in the society and would then tell you what is acceptable action how you need to act 
includes formulation of moral rules and obligation and on those basis on those study it also makes moral rules and obligations so as in uh, as we saw in meta ethics it was only trying to analyze what makes you think in a particular situation normative ethics is trying to uh, prescribe you that how you should act how what is right what is wrong there you were trying to find out that what makes you think uh, think in a particular situation here it is just telling you that it is right or something is wrong or something is acceptable behavior something is unacceptable moving on to to deontological ethics so it is a part of normative ethics only now deon means obligation or duties deontological ethics is normative ethical theory it specifies what are an individual's moral duties and obligations so deontological ethics is based on your duties and your obligation so what you need to do what is your responsibility your responsibility towards your family your responsibility towards your workplace your duties your obligation so if you are doing you if you are following your, your duty you are morally correct but if you are not following your duty you are morally incorrect so this is like if the if there is law that you should not break traffic rules and even if that you are breaking so that would be incorrect according to deontological ethics because it says that you need to follow the laws and regulations you need to follow your duty this theory holds that an action would be morally right only if it complies with his or her duties and works it focuses on compliance with rules and regulations so here's an example killing is wrong even if you do that to protect your family so here it says that killing is wrong so it is uh, it is your duty that you should not kill because uh, it has been mentioned in law that uh, killing someone or murder it's crime it's illegal even if you do that to protect your family or for some other reason it would be wrong because it's against your duty it's against the law it's against obligation now coming to teleological ethics it has been derived from the greek word telos which means end goal or purpose so it is also a branch of normative ethics according to this if one need to find out how one should behave morally the ultimate goal of ethics should be kept in consideration so according to this that if you if you are confused between how you should act what is right what is wrong who would decide that so you should keep in your mind the end purpose so if your purpose is correct if you are doing something for uh, something that is good then you should not uh, think of the situation and you should not think of your action you should think of the end purpose your goal which is correct which is morally correct so it focuses on the end purpose or goal for which you are acting in particular way so let's see for example stealing is bad so uh, stealing is a crime it's illegal but according to teleological theory uh, one may say that i am stealing to feed my family which is good so here the end purpose is feeding your family and this is good this is morally uh, and ethically a correct action so it would justify that the action is good even if you what you are doing is against deontological theory it's against the laws and regulations so it focused on outcome of an action teleological put uh, put an emphasis on what is the outcome of your particular action ethics by virtue it is also referred as character based ethics so it signifies that goodness is not in act but in person now ethics by virtue was a totally different theory it says that how you are acting in one situation you may not act in another situation so your goodness depends on your character it is in your character if you are good you would act in uh, a morally right manner and if you are by character a bad person uh, even if in such some situation you are trying to pretend to be good and doing right things in other situations you would be ending up doing what is unethical and what is uh, immoral so this uh, signifies ethics by virtue it states that if person is by character good or virtuous person he will always act in manner which is morally right honesty courage compassion generosity integrity fairness self control and prudence these are all examples of virtues so ethics by virtue mainly focused on your character and if by character you are a good person you would be doing what is morally right and if you are by character a wrong person even in such some situation you may act but you are not morally a correct person 
Now let's talk about applied ethics. So till now we have seen uh, meta ethics, normative ethics, and now we are talking about applied ethics. So applied ethics refers to practical application of ethics in various fields of life. It attempts to identify correct course of action with respect to particular field in which an individual works, like medical ethics, environmental ethics, business ethics. So applied ethics uh, divided the application of ethics in various fields of your profession. Uh, so, for example, if someone is in medical profession, it is the uh, it is the doctor's duty that they need to treat the patient irrespective of the fee they charge in emergency situation. Their first obligation is towards the treatment of a particular patient which is on surge of life. So that is in uh, uh, consideration of medical ethics. Similarly, environmental ethics, you do not need to harm your environment. So all the pollution control measures and the acts that has come into, come into picture, that is according to environmental ethics. Business ethics, how one should do behave in business scenario. It should be impartial. It should be equality should be there and fair judgment should be given, fair business practices. So all those ethics were applied to business phenomena. So thus, uh, Applied ethics tries to apply uh, ethical principles in various uh, in various fields of profession. Now, for example, the bioethics community is concerned with identifying the correct approach to moral issues in the life sciences, such as the use of euthan euthanasia. So here, euthanasia is given to person who, who is suffering a lot and who is not able to recover. So it is uh, the, uh, this is done to end up their life. So is it morally correct or is it morally wrong? So this is uh, how, uh, how this uh, applied ethics try to... Uh, analyze the situation in various professional fields, the application of ethical principles. Now coming to some major unethical issues which has been ob observed. So insider trading, which is done uh, mostly in financial markets, in, fa in stock market, where the uh, information from the company is uh, leaked to manipulation of uh, share prices. So insider trading, it is unethical, then bribery and corruption. This has been considered unethical discrimination when you are discriminating uh, individuals on the basis of their gender, or race, even if they are having same level of knowledge in business scenario, then that is uh, discrimination that is considered unethical injustice whenever uh, uh, wrong judgment is provided it is in favor of someone or uh, any such situation so injustice is unethical window dressing which is manipulation of financial statements which you are presenting to your stakeholders should not be manipulated you should present the fair full disclosure and thus it is unethical adulteration when you are mixing with the uh, when you are mixing uh, stones and all with the goods and raw materials so that's wrong practice because it can harm your consumer and thus it could create dissatisfaction to the consumers which would which would uh, in longer term lead to dis decline of your business unfair pricing market manipulation fraudulent activities so these are some very relevant uh, very uh, prominent unethical issues which are which are seen in various uh, business scenario now some importance of business ethics. So it helps in stopping business malpractices. It also helps a business to survive for a longer time. So if your business is ethically correct, it is holding good for all the stakeholders. It is socially responsible, behaving in a proper manner towards environment. It uh, it uh, proves that it would create satisfaction in the customer and thus the business would uh, create a uh, kind of trust and retention of customers which would help in longer survival of the business. It helps in protection of consumer right. So if uh, any kind of unethical behavior is not done, it would help in uh, uh, do, uh, doing uh, better with the consumers and thus it will protect the consumer right. Healthy com competition it facilitates. It creates a goodwill for the business. So business reputation is increased if the business is ethically correct. So many times we have seen uh, many good companies or uh, uh, many good banks when they do fraudulent uh, things, they uh, their reputation is down the people the customer cannot trust them anymore so these should be avoided only by focusing on profitability you can't run your business so to maintain a longer survival of business you need to be ethically correct and and create goodwill for your business
customer satisfaction societal welfare it would also help you avoid to legal problems which is uh, uh, very prominent in uh, many companies and business organizations because of some unethical behavior so this was all for this video thank you for watching do like and share my videos subscribe to my channel devtech finance thank you all your uh, uh, your support motivates me a lot thank you for it